It's not enough just not being a racist. We need to be anti-racist. How to Be an Anti-Racist is a book that was written by New York Times bestselling author, Dr. Ibram Kendi, and it was released in August of 2019. This book is part memoir where Kendi paints a picture of his own journey of awareness when it came to race throughout his life. He presents this beside uh, information about historical facts as well as current events. He says, this book is ultimately about the basic struggle to be human and also to see others as they are fully human. In the United States, we've struggled with race and racism even prior to the official inception of this great nation. Many of you watching or listening to the podcast have undoubtedly heard someone make a claim about how they are not racist. Some of my best friends are black. You know, there's a funny Seinfeld episode where George tells his boss, Mr. Morgan, that he looks just like Sugar Ray Leonard. Mr. Morgan immediately makes the comment that, hey, all blacks must look alike to you, George. So to disprove his racial bias, George goes out of his way for the rest of the episode to prove to Mr. Morgan that he has a black friend. In nine seasons of Seinfeld, I just think they managed to touch on so many different facets of life that I'm bringing it up all the time and had a normal conversation. Back to being anti-racist. We've struggled with the concept of race as we understand it today because it really wasn't always a thing in any meaningful way. Historically, the terms race, white, and slave were primarily used by Europeans in the, in the 1500s. Uh, who brought them to North America. And once here, these terms took on a shape and was formed alongside the formation of the United States. And ever since, we've been trying to combat these deeply held beliefs. And for obvious reasons, there have been a lot of discussion about race and racism. Kendi's premise is that it's simply not enough to be not racist. He calls this a neutral position. Instead, we all must continually work against racist ideas and policies and etc. For example, you might not tell racist or off-color jokes, but do you do anything when someone in your family or group does? You see, the neutral position would sit quietly or maybe not even laugh or be encouraging, but the anti-racist would be the person that tells the other, other person that this type of joking is not acceptable and they would discourage the telling of the joke. So Kendi describes being not racist as racism wearing a mask, while anti-racism locates the root of the problem and confronts it. This requires some persistent self-awareness and regular self-examination in order to do this. While I agree with the premise of the book, I'm really not sure about its application and conclusions as we read through. One of the challenges that we have with these types of conversations is that we tend to talk past each other and don't define terms we use in, in the same way. So first we need to agree on what it is that we mean when we use certain terms before we can actually have an intellectual discussion. So in this way, I appreciate that Dr. Kendi starts each chapter with an attempt to set the stage by providing some definitions for the terms that he's using and addressing. Since the book is fundamentally about racist and anti-racist, in chapter one, he provides a definition. Racist, one who is supporting a racist policy through their actions or inaction or expressing a racist idea. Anti-racist, one who is supporting an anti-racist policy through their actions or expressing an anti-racist idea. I don't know about you, but when I was brought up, you couldn't use the word that you're trying to define within its definition. So while Kendi does spend some time later in the book talking about what he considers to be racist and anti-racist policies and ideas, it, it really gets things off to the wrong start, in my opinion. So you have to exercise some patience as he weaves these definitions in with his personal story throughout the book. One of the things that I really liked about the book is that Kenny tries not to overgeneralize. Obviously, it's not right or fair to insinuate that 
all white people are racist simply because they're white. In the same way that we can't say that black people can't be racist simply because they're black. So Dr. Kendi is pretty fair in describing his own challenges and struggles. And when he looks back on his younger self, he characterizes himself as a racist, sexist, homophobe. And all of us are susceptible to racism, classism, and other isms. One of my favorite chapters is early in the book, in chapter two. And I think it's because it just resonates with me so well. Chapter two is about dueling consciousness. This chapter talks about assimilation, segregation, and anti-racism. You know, th this really struck a chord with me because all through my life I've been in spaces where I was one of a few blacks and sometimes even the only black male. I have never liked to make a big deal about race, but from elementary school through high school and college, and even in various workplaces that I've been in, I've always felt other than. You know what I mean? It's hard to explain, but in many of those spaces, I never really just fit in. In these spaces where I was one of the few or only black males, it was like I was always just out on the periphery and, and never really inside. Whereas that generally wasn't the case when I was with other blacks. One instance I remember very clearly was a time I was in our class in elementary school. I think it was a day before a holiday because instead of doing any work, we were just kind of sitting around and, and talking. Somehow we got on a discussion uh, about movies and they brought up a movie with Robert Redford in it. And I remember asking, Who, who's Robert Redford? And the entire class looked at me as if I sprouted a third head. They started naming other movies, sure that I would know who Robert Redford was, and was astonished when I didn't recognize any of the movies that they named. And likewise, when I mentioned the movies uh, that I watched, like Cooley High Harmony or The Last Dragon, Crush Groove, it was clear to me that we had very different tastes in movies. In any case, even though this is a very minor experience, this feeling of being other than was something that I've felt frequently. And ultimately, I, I just wanted to belong, or as Dr. Kendi puts it, I wanted to assimilate into white culture while maintaining my black identity. W.E.B. Du Bois says this is a uh, what he calls a dueling consciousness. So what do we do? Kendi shares that he was diagnosed with stage four colon cancer several years ago. And his wife also battled, battled with breast cancer. And while being faced with his own mortality, he began to see some similarities between his research on race and this disease that he battled. He says this, what if we treated racism in the way that we treat cancer? What has historically been effective at combating racism is analogous to what has been effective at combating cancer. I'm talking about the treatment methods that gave me a chance of, at life, the, that give millions of cancer fighters and survivors like me, like you, like our loved ones, a chance at life. The treatment methods that gave millions of our relatives and friends and idols who did not survive cancer a chance at a few more days, months, years of life. What if humans connected the treatment plans? What he posits is that we saturate the nation's body with this immunotherapy of anti-racist policies that will shrink the tumors of racial inequalities and kill the undetectable cells, that we remove any racist policies like a surgeon remove tumors until we ensure that we'll be left with only healthy cells and equity. Therefore, we need to promote a healthy diet of anti-racist thoughts and ideas in order to uh, reduce the risk of relapse. Dr. Kendi says if we believe in the possibility of becoming anti-racist starting right now, we can transform our societies. Remember, this, this construct of race didn't actually exist until the 15th century. So for thousands of years, there were no groupings or prejudices based on color. There was no negative or positive characteristics or anything that created inequity based on skin. In the span of how long the world has been around, 
racism has only existed for roughly 600 years. So much like we hope with cancer, we've identified this, this tumor or problem of racism fairly quickly. If we individually are anti-racist and we collectively promote anti-racist policies, we have a fighting chance of eradicating this particular sin. How to Be an Anti-Racist, this book, it, it's okay. You know, it's a bit long for my taste. Many of the experiences that he shares are very similar to uh, what I've experienced in my life in many ways. And so the details were a bit repetitive for me. However, this might be very beneficial to someone of a different background. From a Christian perspective, he shares a lot about his parents being influenced by liberation theology, and I believe that overcompensates when it comes to social justice and freedom. While the Bible does address justice and liberty, the main goal in the Bible is to point us to Christ, who is our Redeemer and the one who makes us free. And I just think liberation theology just muddies this up, if not misses the point altogether. And again, the, the main premise of the book is it's not enough not to be racist. We should all be actively working toward being anti-racist in our thoughts and in our deeds. And that's something that I can certainly get behind. So feel free to pick up Abrams Kendi's book about how to be an anti-racist. Um, if you would like something that's more Christian-based, I would recommend the book called White Awake an honest look at what it means to be white. Um, that is a great book. So let me know if in the comments if you'd like for me to do a review on that particular book. I would love to do that for you. And if, um, if you're there, uh, please uh, smash the like button and subscribe to the channel. And if you're listening to the audio podcast, uh, do me a favor, share the episode with someone that you think would benefit from this particular review. So God bless you all and I hope that you will be strong and courageous in living out your faith today. We believe in the possibility of becoming anti-racist. Uh, anti-racist. Robert Redford. Blah, 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 blah. That's it.